Watch out for those white lines. It's race week again. And with the dust set barely settling on the enthralling weekend in Austria, we are here to preview the British Grand Prix. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode 302. And if you'd like to see or hear more from us in your social feed, why not give us a follow? We are at Grid Talk UK everywhere you can find the at symbol. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks. And today I am joined by Grid Talk co- host, Owen Medford. Hello. Uh, Grip Strip podcast, Philip Matthew. Hello. And sports broadcaster, Charlie White. Pleased to be here. And great to have you here as well. And if you had a cheeky bet on there being 1,200 track infringements this weekend, then have we got the uh, the partner for you. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. Bet Online is always your sports information headquarters this season as they have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right up to UFC and boxing. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games that you can play right from your home. Head to betonline.ag today and be sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, which is B L E. AV to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And uh, where we are going to start today is just going back into the past a little bit. I just want to get your uh, your gentleman's opinion on the track limits scandal, I guess we can say. As, uh, those of you who tuned into the Grid Talk Live episode a few days ago, we didn't have the the full extent of the uh, the drama that was about to unfold. So uh, with uh, with you guys here, um, Phil, I'll start with you. Um, what's your opinion on on the track limits fiasco, and and how can we fix it? I mean, this track back in the day, prior to all the different changes and uh, Red Bull buying the track, once upon a time, those last two corners was one sweeping right hand corner with a a banked corner, and it had a wall on it similar to the lion die corner which is a final corner at uh at uh zanfort the i get that because of motorcycles we need to have eight thousand miles of runoff and uh, and it's valid because of what they have to do on those bikes um but i we see even with the amount of runoffs and things like that there's still serious incidents uh that can take place and it doesn't really police it doesn't take care of that. And it also isn't self-policing. You need, if you put grass there, you put gravel there. I think that's probably a better o- option than having eight, 1800 miles of, of runoff or having the absolute, you know, um, medical, uh, medical, uh, incident inducing, uh, situation that we have a Paul Ricard, um, you know, like at least I, I, I don't mind grass and dirt have Astro turf with gra- gravel next to it. I, whatever. It's better than the, what we have there. It's very narrow. Um, they could open up the corner, honestly, uh, if they really wanted to, uh, but you know, they won't. And we'll just continue to have this farcical um, deal here and at other racetracks that we go to on the Formula One circuit. And Owen, do you think they just need to be better? I mean, I think I think I said yesterday. I'm sorry, I think I said on the Grid Talk uh, live pod um, uh, show, basically saying that the, the driver, like, and it's been it's a point that's been well made is that the drivers know how obviously not to get onto the white lines they can claim you know I, the car won't turn or i haven't got enough grip well you can just slow down uh but they won't do that and no notably when it was wet and um uh they managed not to uh to not to go anywhere near there because it would obviously have slowed them down um and my solution to it is either i think i said yesterday like a strip of gravel um or a strip of grass or something like that right next to it and then the runoff behind that still um helps that's still fine for the bikes um, but then uh, obviously negatively impacts your tire grip. Either that or maybe we had some sort of way of, you know, uh, ensuring that, right, okay, if you're going to put all four wheels, or, uh, you know, a couple of wheels off, you're going to get dragged out there anyway. You'll lose so much grip on the, on that side that you'll get dragged out there anyway and, you, and you'll lose a, he- a heap of time. Uh, I'm not sure how much I like that, but some, some sort of um, deterrent that means that, you know what, you're not going to just lose five seconds. You might lose quite a lot of time over your stint just because you've been over there and, and it's going to cost you lap time. 
Yeah, one of Martin Brundle's most uh, uh, favourite lines on that is uh, the the accelerator pedal works in both directions. You, know, you don't have to go flat out. So, Charlie, anything uh, groundbreaking that you want to add? I just um, in the Grid Talk uh, Slack channel, I said it when, during the race. I said these, you know, they're held to a higher standard of driving. This is the pinnacle of motorsport, as it is, as everyone kind of agrees to that they should be able to keep a car between two white lines. Like it shouldn't, I, as somebody who does not drive F1, it shouldn't be that difficult if you are getting paid that much money to drive a car because there is a brake pedal. Like if you're constantly sliding across, Norris didn't lose time for time penalties. And I'm losing track of all the penalties, but I don't think Verstappen did either. So, and he went around on the last track on softs, even going even more faster to try and get the fastest lap. And he's still didn't so i i'm not i, I kind of like um and joe as well and so i kind of agree with uh, owen and that if you know you add that kind of deterrent that makes you lose more time i'm fine with it but at the same time you'd have to do a lot of track track infrastructure adjustments and i think i saw if i remember correctly that they agreed to bring austria back to two minutes or uh, till uh, two minutes um 2030 was that the extension? Yes, yeah. And so to try and keep it in my two minute window, um, they'll they'll have to rip it all up and do that. So I don't think they'll even bother paying for that given the window of time because it's just there's a lot of money to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, yeah, it, it's it's fine as long as it's the same for everyone. But uh, I think they're a victim of their own um, their own kind of iron fist ruling there. And although I completely agree that the iron fist ruling is the way to go, they need to find a better way of policing it. Uh, so it's consistent for everyone because that wasn't consistent and it wasn't fair uh, on the people that got post-race penalties and the people that took the took the penalty in the race as well. From there's an argument on both sides to say it's not fair. So, but we'll move on to the uh, to the future from the past and we'll move on to the British Grand Prix this weekend. Alpha Tori will start with they are the bottom team now. They've got one driver on two points and another driver under pressure. I seem to say it every week, Phil, but uh, a team in crisis right now. Have they got any hope of turning things around this weekend? Not this weekend. Um, probably later in the season, maybe post uh, summer break. Because, uh, you know, just like their um, senior team, they'll figure out ways around the cost cap. But um, the uh, in terms of what's going on with uh, DeVries, even though his bestie is giving his support and all these things, the car's not there really. Um, pace wise, they're not in a great place. Yuki is Yuki. Um, there's a lot going on there uh, in terms of what the team is going to be, what the structure of the team is going to be. Um, sponsorship also. I'm honestly believe they're going to have two new drivers next year. That's my personal opinion. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me. At a minimum, they're going to have one for sure. Um, but I, I it, they're not, they've been going down this path for the last couple, two, three years. They're coming off of when Pierre Gasly won the Italian Grand Prix, and that was probably the peak of this team, this organization. And since then, it's been a fall from grace to the point where Williams is wiping the floor with them. And, um, and it's no offense to Williams, but the fact is for what they've gone through, now they're ahead of them. It's not going to happen this weekend unless a miracle of some sort comes along or Sebastian Vettel comes out of retirement and uh, decides to jump in one of those cars, maybe. I don't know. Oh, that would be good to see. I would enjoy that. You can imagine that DeVries getting dropped just before Suzuka and Vettel's there like, I'll race, I'll race. I can uh, genuinely see that, that happening uh, if it's Suzuka. No other place on the calendar, though. But uh, moving on then to Williams Owen with various flirtations with the points in recent weeks. And Sargent did actually move off the bottom spot in the championship in Austria with his uh, 13th place, I think it was. However, still yet to break into the points. Is there finally some optimism coming out of the Williams camp? Yeah, I mean, I, this, this was one of, I mean, obviously they got the six points in Canada, which was uh, um, really great um, for them. And then, uh, and, and Sergeant, you know, if you can continue this, cause unfortunately I've had a look through his last few results. He's probably the finish last, um, you know, well off the lead lap or, or, or had a DNF or, or, you know, a couple of laps down. So he, he's had a hard time of it re relatively recently. Hopefully this is sort of the turning point. Um, 
you know, I sort of look at this, look at the circuit as well. Like obviously, car performance is quite a big thing. Um, at Silverstone, obviously, uh, that you know, it really does sort of have who's who, who's got a decent car and who hasn't. Um, you know, without without Bond consistently putting in decent performances, and as you say, flirting with the points, I think there was even a portion of the race where where Sergeant could have got points uh, just to pay, just depending on where the the where the penalties came through. Um, you know, there, there was a time where uh, it was going to look like it was looking like another great weekend for them. Obviously, it fell away a little bit, little bit, but they are they are now ahead of uh, well, quite comfortably, to be honest, ahead of uh, Alpha Tauri. Um, so I, I think this is going to be a good weekend for them. Yeah, and uh, they seem to go well on the high speed tracks. And although there's, there's a lot of downforce needed at Silverstone, there is some very high speed areas as well. I'm looking forward to Monza for Williams as a, from a Williams point of view to see how they get on there. We saw what happened last year, and maybe that will be Nick De Vries's uh, savior if he can stay in that seat till Monza, which I'm not convinced he will. Uh, he may well get his freeze there. So, Charlie, moving on to Alfa Romeo then, just four points finishes out of a possible 18, and they have fallen behind Haas and are being reeled in by Williams, as we just said. Should they be worried, or is this just a flash in the pan time? No, I think I think they have every right to be worried because the Haas has good single lap uh, pace, as we've seen by Hulkenberg's you know, very good qualifying times as of late. The Williams, and with Albon and even Sargent, uh, for the Austrian Grand Prix, they were performing well, and Albon got the six points in Canada. Can you tell me the last decent thing that an Alfa Romeo has done, other than make it through a race? Because I can't. Not like to the point of where you're looking at these bottom teams and going, all right, well, Albon has scored points in Canada. You have, uh, oh, lost my train of thought. You have Albon scoring points in Canada. You have the Williams as a team moving up and Hockenberg getting uh, uh, P2 in qualifying. Like there's, there's notable things that they, they, those teams can hang their hat on. Whereas I just feel that every single race week lately that Joe and Bottas have just kind of been atrophying around that under 10. I mean, he got 12th, but he wasn't really challenging the Williams. I don't think by the end of that race, it was just congratulations. They're running a race. Now there's, I think there's upgrades coming for them this weekend. Uh, yeah, this weekend for Silverstone, but I don't know. I honestly don't know if it's going to do anything. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of an enigma team once again, and uh, the the highs of last year certainly in the past. And moving on to you, Philip, your your favorite team, your favorite American team, there, Haas. Um, Hulkenberg was uh, was he held onto sixth place? I think it was in the sprint to move Haas up one place in the constructors, but we've only four sprints and their diabolical full race pace will points be slim pickings this weekend and potentially the rest of the season because that that team just doesn't seem to know how to put it together in a race yeah i mean for hulkenberg as as charlie mentioned i mean the one lap pace is there uh he's proven that all season uh unfortunately no matter how many curses that Gunther says their brace pace is trash and it's not going to be good enough to compete against this very tight midfield now with Williams making progress, uh, especially. And then when you give credence to the fact that, you know, I mean, they're not really in the mix with the next two teams above them. So they're in their own race. And I want to hold up against Williams. Probably the other two teams are not really a threat. So they're just trying to stay ahead of them. Um, Kevin Magnuson, I don't know what happened to him. Uh, has happened to them this year unfortunately um, they're not going to make a change they've already basically came out and said that they're going to keep the same driver lineup um, which is fine for bills and keeping cars clean and not really crashing which is fine but in terms of overall progress and trying to move forward uh, up th- up the field I don't know where that that lineup and where that group is going to be doing uh, not this weekend. I don't think they're, they might, I mean, Hulkenberg liable to go and make Q3. That's fine, but he'll drop like a rock soon after the race starts. So it really won't make a difference one way or the other. Yeah. Such an enigma that team. And, and, but I, I, I have a bit of the opinion with this team that they've always been like this. You know, you go back to like 2017, 2018, they were the same then. It's, I, I don't think, I don't think people can, can really, 
be surprised that they're this inconsistent on race day because that's pretty much always been the case. I can't remember a time when they've actually really taken a race by the scruff of the neck, showed good time management and come through and you know, uh, uh, outperformed the cars around them with that potential that one season was in 2018 when they were fighting for fifth in the championship. That was the the only time where they seemed to have any any kind of race pace. So I think it's more of a, the rule rather than the exception for Haas. And they need to get on top of it because it's they're just hemorrhaging points. But uh, moving on to, to McLaren, a slightly better good news story then um, is uh, moving on to you, Wayne. They've been booed by what were boy Boyd rather by <laughs> not been booed. Well, they've been booed by the livery they just released. <laughs> According to you guys, it's a bit of a bit of a, an, an extreme chrome design there. But uh, but yeah, you can make your own opinions on that. Um, Boyd by an eventual P4 in Austria when we eventually found out what the final result was. And uh, just 18 points behind Alpine now. And Piastri and Norris should both be getting more upgrades this week if all goes to plan. 75% of the upgrades will be on the car, on both cars, hopefully, this weekend with the final upgrades coming next weekend uh, or, the, or the next race after that, sorry. Um, was this just Norris being amazing in Austria or have McLaren turned that corner? Um, I, I, it's difficult to know. Um, obviously, like, Piastri had such a poor race that I don't think we have that sort of benchmark that would be useful uh, in helping us discern whether, the, you know, the, the car has clearly taken a step forward. That's very obvious to the point where it should be worrying Alpine. And, you know, it it, it looks almost ominous uh, in some ways that, um, you know, it looks almost ominous that he's going to be moving forwards. Obviously, uh, Oscar did have to change his front wing. Um, I hope that wasn't a new one. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> we'll be scrambling for parts. Um but yeah, it's, uh, I, I I think I think they're they're on the up. Um, their car performance did seem fairly decent. Um, you know, Piastri seems to be uh, he's had a bit of a rough run of it recently, which is unfortunate. His only points have come in Australia and and Monaco. Um, but Lando obviously is well embedded within the team. He'll probably be buoyed up by the fact that um, it's his home race. Uh, I, I I think they it's one of those things where they could overtake. Like if they, if they get a decent points haul um, and Alpine do Alpine things <laughs> and usually lose someone in the race, I uh, you know I can I can imagine them uh, uh, McLaren being being in front of them by uh, come come next Monday. So um, yeah, I think it's a I, I think McLaren have a lot to be hopeful for, and uh, and if they can just you know if if Oscar can just pull out a few more points um, points finishes, um, that you know they're going to start making the guys at Alpine look. Uh, look significantly worse. No, I think they do a pretty good job of that themselves, to be honest, with their uh, with their race optimization. You would certainly put money on on McLaren optimizing a race strategy over Alpine, the way things have been going at the moment. And uh, it's a nice change, though, not having to rely on Norwich. I know Piastri's not been piling up the points exactly, but his performances have been a lot closer to, to Norris. And uh, after finishing fifth with the fourth best car in 21 and uh, and and. Uh, Sorry, uh, four, fourth with the third, but yeah, third with the fourth best car, fourth with the fifth best car. Um, it'd be nice if they actually, you know, if they if they can get this this uh, fifth place in the championship with probably the sixth best car. That would be uh, certainly a successful season given how bad it started. But we'll move on to the uh, perennial underachievers then, Charlie, in Alpine. Ocon with a million post race penalties, and uh, I'm not sure he'll even be starting. Silverson, he's got so many penalties, um, and uh, the top four seem to be pulling away at a vast rate of knots. Their uh, their pre season targets have uh, definitely gone by the wayside but at least I got Ryan Reynolds on board uh, is this season now a case of looking over their shoulder I think it very well could be um, if the McLaren is actually as good as what it seems to be in this last race which again Norris can make a bad car good because he's a good driver and that's kind of the hallmark of a good driver is pulling a car ahead Alpine have been decent like they haven't blown up any engines in the last few races they haven't crashed into into each other since since australia but they seem just to kind of have peaked might not be the right word but there's not been any major forward progression i've found other than you know some flashes of brilliance now and again but overall race pace and everything is kind of kind of flat flattened out so if the mclaren is coming strong now it very well could be echoes of last year where it is right down almost to the wire of who's going to get that that last spot, McLaren or Alpine. So, I think I think it is very much they're looking over their shoulders and they need to they need to improve. 
I, I, I am so here for that. I think, uh, I know we got nothing up the front, but second, third and fourth fighting it out. And then we're, a great battle between McLaren and Albin for fifth and sixth. I am here for that. That's going to give us something to cheer for. And then with the, uh, the final four teams fighting it out for, for the rest, that's, uh, that's going to give us something to, to to at least something to commentate on on these podcasts anyway. But moving on to uh, to Ferrari and Phil, we've got a, a strong showing, two races in a row now, and uh, still question marks over their trackside operations, with Sainz certainly not optimising, given the pace that he had uh, on, uh, on pit wall things, you know, Ferrari things. How do you see their chances in Silverstone? Can they repeat Sainz's victory from last year? I figure the smooth operator would hope so, but... Um... You know, I'm not I, I had something else in my head. I'm not going to say that I'll probably save that for my show. But the fact is, it's uh, for Verstappen these days. It's a matter of how many seconds he's going to win by, not if he's going to lose a race uh, for Ferrari. As you say, Tom, trying to optimize a race when they're talking to Leclerc. Or I forget if it was Leclerc or if it was Sainz. And they said, what about a three stop? And he just said no. Um, that was probably one of the best sound bites of the day um everyone's talking about lewis and toto one little snippet but uh that was a good one um at the end of the day they probably sh- could have had a double podium there and uh, getting what they got out of it is fine uh their qualifying is you know it depends on the day and the time it's it, they have a chance this weekend definitely to compete for a double top five i would say but I also know that they have two other teams that they're going to battle for that. So they could be struggling. It won't be the same kind of return as they had last year by any means. Um, who knows, maybe unless uh, rain or something, uh, you know, a meteor goes and hits the, the one car or something, that might be the only way that there will be a, a different result. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's... Uh, Ferrari, it's difficult to say. I mean, they, they've t- certainly closed the gap now on on Mercedes and Aston Martin. That's going to be a titanic fight for second in the championship. So uh, that's 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 great. But yeah, like you say, there's still those overall question marks. And with uh, the team we're about to talk about next as well, with their their second driver involved, and um, as as well, you think probably the the smart money's on Mercedes with the best operationally and the uh, and and the best two drivers out of those three teams as well. But uh, but we will talk about Aston Martin now and they, they are the surprise package of the season, Owen. So we, we can't be too downbeat on them and, and it's easy to forget where they were, you know, just a few months ago. But two weekends out of the last three, they they have looked a bit off and Stroll seems to be a lot closer to Alonso on conventional tracks. And this is a conventional track coming up. Are we are we likely to see, uh, see the little boys who literally live down the lane uh, making it a homecoming for Aston Martin? Uh, <clears throat> unless there are uh, unless there are upgrades, they have any upgrades coming. I don't think so. I think we're starting to see where uh, the uh, the end of uh, the the speed that comes out of the Aston Martin. I think they made a good step, obviously, over the winter. Um, but I don't. Th- I, I think it's similar to sort of um, back <laughs> back when they were the pink Mercedes, where you know initially they were quite good, um, and then they uh, the, you could see that the, the difference in development and um, in development and capability. Uh, obviously, Stroll is slightly, you know, Stroll is bringing it up to sort of Alonso levels, or you know, as close as you can get. You know, he's definitely doing a better job. But I don't think either of those two things are uh, enough to overcome the fact that I think they're going to go backwards from here on out. Um, you know, as, as much as they're only three points behind Mercedes, I don't see them getting those three points. I don't see them outscoring by Mercedes by three points either at Silverstone or any other race. Um, you know, I think I think it's operationally they're not as sharp. Um, I, th- I, th- I think that you're, st- you're just unfortunately seeing the difference between a world championship winning team um, and, and a team that has won multiple world championships um, and one that unfortunately you know, has made some, a decent step. But um, it, 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 I think that it's destined to go backwards. It was just a case of how long it's lasted. I mean, they're going to get to almost halfway through the season. So I think that's quite impressive. But, um, you know, uh, uh, unless there's a sort of freak you know, unless they really luck out just through the way things play out at Silverstone, I don't see them um, m- m- making any more sort of large steps forward, um, either either now or or in the future. 
Uh, Alonso was absolutely convinced that the car was going to get faster as the season went on due to the uh, the the aero regulations. So, so there is some hope there for them, but uh, it certainly doesn't seem that way at the, at the moment. And as to Marcel, I've got I've got two predictions that uh, I, I caused a bit of a stir with. One of them is re- re- with regards to Aston Martin. I was asked early in the season, uh, will Stroll cost them second place? And I said, no, he won't. He'll cost them third. Um, that's starting to look to me like it could be a possibility with Ferrari. Uh, and their onset of form. Um, we will we'll probably talk about my other prediction later on when we get to Red Bull. But uh, moving on to you, Charlie, we'll talk about the uh, um, the, the eight-time champions Mercedes. Um, two steps forward, one step back. A, a bad weekend overall for for the Silver Arrows, but big plans for this weekend with the upgrades. We're, we're seeing upgrades have a huge influence on the cars this year, more than we've seen in previous years. And can the British fans realistically hope for a home win for their drivers, or is that uh, is that too far? No, I I think I'd have to agree with Phil on this. There had to be something close to a meteor hitting the first car for it to really slow down enough or, you know, just a reliability thing. But there hasn't been, I don't think there's been any reliability issues for either of the uh, the front running team so far this year that I can think of. Um, but you're right. It is kind of a two steps forward, one step back. I wonder for this coming race, though, because it's the home one, he, uh, Hamilton, I think for, what kind of affected him last the last race was kind of got into his own head. I know he's a brilliant driver and I won't take it away, but he was he seemed when they kept cutting to the team radios talking about track limits, track limits, track limits. Who's in front of me with track limits? And they they came across a couple of times. Like, Everyone in front of you will have track limits. You just focus on driving. So I I wonder if that kind of affected the Mercedes performance too. Historically, it's not their best track. Silverstone last year was a great race for them. Now, mind you, different cars. But I think they have definitely something to look forward to this week. Um, I don't think first place is going to be on the cards, but I think they'll definitely uh I think they'll definitely take the the Aston Martins and the Ferraris. Yeah, I think we'd all hope for a little bit of floor damage to Verstappen like we had last year, which uh, very much uh, turned the race on its head. So uh, that here's hoping on on that front, not because we don't like Red Bull or, or Max Verstappen, but more just because we want to see some a competition. And maybe if you take off 50 points of downforce off the Red Bull, then perhaps other cars might have a chance of, of actually racing them. But uh, moving on to Red Bull then, Phil, we've got uh, the runaway leaders. They lead the Constructors' Championship now by 199 points. And there's uh, there's 98 points between Verstappen and third place Alonso. And uh, I guess the question is, can anybody even come close to beating them? I think you've already covered that off. But please give us something to look forward to for this weekend. Uh, we can watch what happens with Sergio Perez in qualifying. Um, that's become quite interesting here in recent weeks. Um, and what his great leadership says in the media, that also seems to be interesting as well. Um, we know what the other guy is going to do. He's going to qualify. He'll, he'll just kind of sneak around an FP1. He'll run fast as an FP2, probably an FP3 as well. Qualify on pole win the race it's just a matter by how many seconds unless he does get damage of course like what happened last year um but the notion that he's going to be anywhere near cars uh after about two laps is highly unlikely um but i mean for perez i think now he's got a battle for second in the world championship for the drivers and he has to battle two former world champions in the process plus you have you know, the Ferrari guys and George Russell, they're just kind of over there on the periphery. So the notion that that's the thing we we really can focus on all these other battles behind Red Bull that are more interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's we, that's what this, the rest of the season is going to be, uh, probably. And um, it's un, it's unfortunate. It's happened in other seasons and but it's pretty like the way that it's happening this year is like let Ferrari, Michael Schumacher levels of domination uh, back in the early 2000s, where basically you knew he was going to win the pole and he was going to start on, he was going to start on pole, get the start and win the race. That's literally where we're at now. 
Yeah, that's a really strong comparison, actually. I hadn't thought of that exact comparison. And, you know, the, the obvious comparisons always come with Mercedes and their period of domination. But uh, this is much more like a Schumacher period of domination where the other driver is not even in with a shout. At least when Mercedes were dominating, you know that you knew that the other driver had got, well, I mean, he, Paris is getting equal treatment, but he doesn't have the uh, the, the talent to uh, to take it to to Max Verstappen and um and obviously, we've—I uh, will mention this because I've not actually mentioned this on a podcast yet. I know George mentioned it on Grid Talk Live um, on uh, on Sunday. We've both got the bet now. I've bet that Sergio Perez will not win a race again this season. George has countered that by saying he will. The loser of said bet has to uh, is going to have to come on a pod, the next podcast, wearing a sombrero and underwear. And that is it. So uh, I'm looking quite confident at the moment. I'm uh, I'm confident that uh, that I I'm not going to have to click buy on the uh, the wish list of sombreros I've got on my Amazon cart right now. So uh, we'll move on to predictions, and I'll start with with you, Wayne. Now uh, we'll we'll rattle them all through at once. And uh, so we've got pole position, uh, and then we've got the podium, and then also give us a, a bold prediction as well. I mean, I, I I can't see it being anyone other than you know I. I Sometimes I get a bit bold with 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 the predictions, but it's going to be Max Verstappen on pole, isn't it? Um, you know, unless a wheel falls off, uh, and even then he'd probably still manage it. Um, and then obviously Max Verstappen for the win, um, and then the two Ferraris behind. Uh, I'll go with Leclerc. No, I'll go with Sainz over Leclerc. I think I think Ferrari have acted have somehow managed to break Leclerc. Um, I guess my bold prediction. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with an Alpha Tauri to get points. Wow, that's uh, that's bold. That's definitely bold. <laughs> okay, Charlie, uh, your your poll, podium, and bold prediction, please. Kind of a similar vein to Owen, but Max on uh, Max P one, then Hamilton P two, Russell P three with the the Merck upgrades. And for my bold, I kind of have two. Uh, if Russell doesn't get third, Norris will, and just for funsies, that a third Canadian will buy into an F1 team by this weekend. <laughs> We've got two. <laughs> might as well make might as well make it three. My fellow oh. countrymen spending some money. But we've also got Michael Latifi involved as well, so uh, I think he's still got. Uh, <laughs> I think he's still got some some backing in McLaren and maybe even some backing in Williams as well. But uh, but uh, yeah, I believe he's still involved. But yeah, yeah, let's that, that, get some more. I mean, Celine Dion, does she want to? Does she want to get? Why into not? One? I maybe, mean, Ryan maybe. Reynolds. <laughs> if he does it, why not? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Phil, your predictions. Yeah, so as the guys over here, our, our lawn people are here and got the leaf blower going, uh, just like a leaf blower, uh, first off, and we're going to blow everybody away. And behind that, we will have, um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go out and I'm going to say Lewis is going to finish second this weekend. And I will actually support Sergio Perez, unlike his team, and uh, say he'll finish third because he'll actually get through qualifying and qualify in q3 for once uh, my bold prediction is that logan Sargent is going to score points kind of like how george used to always go with george russell i think i'm going to start going with that uh, until it happens just because i have to be the token american guy and i have to root for the american um but i do root for him anyway uh, i don't have to um, make it up um i'm definitely not uh Lance Stroll is definitely not my hero. That is slander that is in the Slack chat. Um, he will never be my hero unless I had his bankroll, unless I had his checking account. And then, you know, maybe I would turn that around. But yeah, that's my oh. take. Brilliant. Well, you've taken my bold prediction. I was going to go Sergeant uh, for points for my bold prediction. So uh, I'm going to swap that around and I'm going to say Nick DeVries for points is my bold prediction. Um, I'm going to go completely against what I've uh, what what I've said and my my opinions, but uh, um, you'll you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to actually say Sergio Perez for poll, um, but you'll notice that uh, he's not on my podium for you know similar reasons for what I said earlier. Um, it's going to be Max Verstappen winning the race clearly, uh, similar to. Uh, similar to you guys, I think uh, Lewis will be up there in second place, and Carlos Sainz will will get a podium to 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 round that off. So that's uh, our preview and our predictions. You can see how wrong we are. Just go to our socials and uh, and you'll see at Grid Talk UK. Uh, feel free to share with us and, uh, and let us know what you think. And uh, who knows, you may well get a mention on the show if we like what you write. Um, if you've enjoyed this podcast, we would love it if you'd leave us a five-star review on Spotify, uh, 
and Apple Podcasts. And uh, if you do that, then obviously we'll give you a shout out on the show as well. And if you're one of those listeners who are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, why not subscribe so you never miss a show again? And don't forget to click that bell so you know when we're going live. We have well over 2,000 subscribers now on YouTube. So thank you for your support there. And please consider sharing us with a friend So uh, if you like what we're doing. So before we go then, Wayne, would you like to plug anything? Uh, I think uh, I'm going to plug, you know what, uh, if you haven't seen it already, um, please could you go and watch the uh, <laughs> the, the uh, Grid Talk Live that we did, um, or at least the recording of it. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into that one. Uh, you know, it took a lot of coordination and uh, we're really proud of it. So we'd, uh, we'd uh, like you to go and have a watch, um, you know, sort of see, see what, I mean, it's, it's a little bit out of date, unfortunately, with the penalties, but um, yeah, we're really happy with it and we'd... Uh, we'd uh, we'd like you to go have a watch yeah it was it was good listening i listened to it this afternoon myself and uh it, we'd love to do stuff like this more often but the fact is we're all not only scattered around the uk as you can tell by our panel today we're scattered all over the world we've got we've got uh, contributors in uh in australia in uh in new zealand all over the place and uh so to come together and do podcasting together is is very difficult there's only there's only been a handful uh myself and tom were were together for a podcast a while back with the other people not uh not together so uh, to have everyone together is such a rare thing and uh especially in the the, the landscape as it is now so we, we we love to do more of those so uh, who knows in the future we'll hopefully do some more charlie uh, you're a uh, you're a uh, broadcaster where can people go and hear more of your dulcet tones uh for those of our eastern canadian viewers i work with eastlink where we cover the local sports we cover hockey basketball football american football uh baseball and uh just a couple weeks ago we were looking at uh, doing drag racing so we're we're expanding the 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 markets out um we didn't get to do the drag racing because it rained which in nova scotia it's been raining i think for the last three weeks my garden is absolutely atrocious but i can't get out because it's a muck hole so anyway that's if you want if you're in eastern canada eh, check out eastlink tv nice okay and phil do you want to tell us about the grip strip pod if people don't know about it already yeah absolutely tom uh Grip Strip Podcast. Uh, we I do it with uh, my co-host Joshua Fine, and we talk about all things motorsports, not only in North America but also in the world. We talk about Formula One. We've got a new um, method by which we uh, present our Formula One coverage. So definitely want to tune into that. Uh, got a lot to talk about this week with Shane Van Gisbergen winning on debut in NASCAR uh, at the Chicago Street Course. So we're going to be talking about. And we talk about four wheels, two wheels, the easiest way to go. If it goes fast, we talk about it on the Grip Strip Podcast. And we're on uh, Twitter, at Grip Strip Pod. We're on YouTube, Grip Strip Podcast, where we put the video or the, the feed. And uh, our podcasts appear basically anywhere you can hear podcasts. So um, thanks for that. And great work as always, Tom. Great to be on. And Owain and uh charlie and uh glad to be a part of the team being able to sub uh definitely not as good looking or as smart as sophia definitely not but we was was able to come in and uh sub in when necessary so part of why it's such a great team here on grid talk even with the slander in, in the post yeah great great to have you and such great strength and depth that when when people uh aren't able to make it other people can jump on at a moment's notice so thank you again for that all our race shows on grid talk do go out on youtube live straight after the event so uh come on board and uh and have a chat with us and we'll uh we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a chat in the post show as well uh the audio versions do go out slightly later but uh but still fairly soon after the event which is on amazon fire spotify google podcast apple music verbal and pocket cast and probably a load of other ones we don't know about uh we also do run a patreon so if you want to help us continue to do what we do please consider donating to us and everything that you donate will go back into the show to improve the experience we will be back at this this weekend, uh, track limits and all, and probably more penalties for uh, to dissect what uh, what will be the British Grand Prix. So uh, we can't wait to see you then. So goodbye. <laughs>